Tears of Mithril. At the Sign of the Running Horse, narrated by Troy Dolanyuk, Part 3, Weapon of Choice. Oh, look who we have here, the young man said in a slurred voice. I wouldn't expect to find one of your lot here of all places. He made an attempt at bowing towards Elvin, nearly falling out of his seat. Hello, sir. I'm Dookie Reptan, Sellsword. It's an honor to meet you. Pleased to meet you too, mister. Just Ducky is fine. All right, Elvin smiled. Ducky. I am Lieutenant Elvin Ranley, late of His Majesty's Men of Foot. You can call me Elvin. He smiled. Ducky nodded back, then took a long swig from his mug. Awesome. He drained the drink, then called for more. Leaning in closely, he dropped his voice and said while gesturing somewhere at Elvin's back, If you need a head cleaved off, I'm your man. He steadied himself on his stool as he nearly fell to the floor. I will give you a good discount. Elvin looked over Ducky's shoulder and saw a sheathed sword hanging from the wall. It was as long as a man, at least six feet, and as wide as a shovel. But he could believe it. Indeed, anything less would simply be a bottleneck for a man of Ducky's size. I appreciate the offer, but I am fine for the moment, thank you, he said with a nod. Oh, I mean no offense, your honor, of course not. Someone like you can obviously handle yourself just fine. It's clear looking at that silver plate you got there. I only mean that sometimes it's better to risk money than life, you know what I mean? Alvin ignored this and went back to his dinner. Are you sure you are okay leaving your sword hanging out in the open like that? It looks valuable. What if someone tried to pinch it when you were not looking? Ducky roared with laughter, then stared at Alvin. His eyes looked ferocious in the firelight. Who'd be foolish enough to steal from the man who wields that? Elvin nodded. That seemed quite reasonable. Ducky did not look as if he needed the sword to stop a thief. And besides, Ducky continued, it's just a lump of steel. The real weapon is right here. He beat his chest. How would you steal that? Elvin smiled politely and went back to his supper. Ducky continued to drink. Looking back across, Elvin noticed that the young woman had brought out a slim book and was writing in it. I'd let it go if I were you, sir. Elvin jumped out of his skin as he heard Ducky's voice right beside his ear. That's not the sort that a Ranley would like. You know about Ranleys, do you? Of course, said Ducky. What kind of sellsword would I be if I didn't know who my clients were? Ducky paused. Well, I'd not be a very good one then, would I? As I said before, the more power and wealth you've got, the more you want folks like us to take care of your dirty work. And the Ranleys is one of the highest paying customers. Is that so? Ducky nodded. Well, I may be a Ranley, but I am probably the poorest among them. How's that? Long story, maybe another time. What about you? What about me? Ducky asked blankly. What are you, a good soldier? Ducky roared with laughter again. I'm an awful soldier, he exclaimed. That's why I'm not wearing one of those uniforms. But I'm a great killer, and that's what I like. Working hard and then getting to party while someone else cleans up the mess. He drank again. Anyway, as I was saying earlier, you'd be better off finding a woman to talk to in pubs better suited to your status. Blood doesn't mix, does it? That's what you folks are always saying. Alvin sighed. Ducky, not every nobleman is stuck up like that, and not every noble family has a fortune. My father was a Ranley, right enough, but mother was a commoner. He sipped his drink and looked at his food. He got cut right out for it, too. Ducky went silent. After a while, he muttered, Still, a commoner and a street urchin are like whiskey and water. You can guess which one is which. How would you know? You do not even know the lady. Ducky gave him a strange look, then said quietly, A rat knows another rat when it sees one. And you're free to make your choices, my lord. No one is getting in your way. Certainly not me, when I don't need to get tangled up in schemes of some assassins or thieves or worse. I keep an ear on the news that comes from the front lines, and I hear stories. And I recognized you the moment I saw you. The hero of Blood Valley. I respect you because you're not like them. Selfish, money-grubbing, lording cowards sitting on our shoulders like ghosts. You're actually brave. You're a fighter. To orphans and abandoned like us, you're our hero. Ducky slowly got up from his seat, wobbling as he did and dragging up the heavy mug refilled for the umpteenth time and added, It was nice meeting you, sir. 
He attempted a salute, then walked away back to the table. Ducky's nose wrinkled. The air in here is so foul, don't you think? And I don't mean the tobacco or the stale ale. Elvin sat still for a while with a piece of bread in his hand. Ducky's words had left him thunderstruck. He did not really know what to think, but he could not help feeling some shame for thinking so low of the man. Should he call him back and apologize? Perhaps not. Ducky had started to dance again as the music picked up, and this time a few young men and women joined him too. No, he would leave things well enough alone. This was not the time for confrontation. He finished his food and got up ready to go and find his bed. For a moment, though, a thought struck him. What had Ducky meant about the air? Tales of Mithrim are written by Jimmy Clefay. Mithrim is a fantasy world built for the dungeon room role-playing game system. To find out more about the world of Mithrim, or to try out the game, go to www.mithrim.com.